50 Shades of Wrong a Neckbeard Story Please like, comment and subscribe This is of my own encounter with a neckbeard, probably more incel, so here goes. It's gonna be a long one. The year is late 2018, and I have freshly turned 25, gotten out of a long-term relationship. It wasn't healthy for either of us, and I was looking forward to start my new life as a single woman in the PNW. I spent a lot more time on Reddit at that point. Nothing dirty, but casual chat with a lot of people as well as roleplay. I used to roleplay a lot and now with my new freedom, I was ready to pick that up again. I mostly stuck with anime, but at that point I ventured into Marvel RP. I don't want to brag, but I am a very good roleplay partner, and as my fellow ARPers know, it can be hard to find a partner that matches your ability. After a few weeks of searching, I get a message on Kick, Primitive, I know, from who we will call Christian. Christian and I plan out a roleplay stories, our characters, ECT and get things, going. Now when I'm ARPing, I really like to get to know my partner. Every long-term RP partner I've had we've become friends, and some I still talk to years later on a regular basis long after the roleplay has ended. I get to know Christian a bit, and looking back I looked over so many disturbing red flags. The moment Christian and I started speaking, he made it known that he was a brain cancer survivor. I won't ever berate a person for speaking about their illness, but Christian made it a very prominent part of his conversations. At the time I just thought it was okay, he's going through something, and it's not like it's a topic most people can relate to, so I listened and helped him as much as I could. Christian lived with his parents after losing his job when the company he worked for shut down, and due to him having surgery recently he couldn't go back to work right away, which made sense. Christian was a programmer and managed to start his own small business. He didn't make enough to live on his own yet, but enough to get by. You gotta do what you gotta do, and I was happy he had some sense of self-startership. I let Christian know that I was recently out of a long-term relationship, working full-time, university full-time, had friends and family nearby and that I was a pretty active person, always on the go. We bonded over MTG, Marvel, creature lore, art, ya know, nerd crap. Over the course of a few weeks Christian started talking more, depressed. Than usual. Just down on himself, his illness which he seemed to be making a full recovery from, and his looks, and how no woman would love him. Long story short, his wife cheated on him and left him some time ago. I fell for that trap telling him he couldn't look too bad, and being someone who used to be very down about herself on their looks, I related. Christian sent me a picture of himself. He was pale, thin, scruffy red beard. He didn't have the weight and fedro of a regular neck beard, but he was definitely geeky looking. Honestly, not attractive, but whatever. I told him he wasn't bad looking, and he was still down on himself, and he asked me for a picture, so I sent one. Now that I'm older and have some maturity, I can say I am very pretty and am way out of Christian's league. But after that pic was sent, the downfall started. I need to mention that Christian was 34 or 35 at the time, I can't remember, so roughly 10 to 11 years older than me. Legal, but too old for me to consider dating. But from then on, Christian proceeded to slowly and calculatingly guilt me into dating him. Some of the comments he made went like this. You're beautiful, I bet so many guys your age are interested in you. Dot but that doesn't include me. If I were younger I'd treat you like a guy should, but again that's not a possibility. In another lifetime we could have been together, but sadly this is my reality. I'm a good man. I wish you'd give me a chance, but I won't pressure you. Now, I don't know 100% why I did it. I know partially it's because I had mostly negative male figures in my life. My dad was the greatest man of all time, but died when I was six. 
My mom is also a good woman, but after my dad passed, she fell hard and dated very abusive men. That on top of dealing with frequent verbal and sometimes sexual assault from the men in my mom's church, I didn't really know how a good man was actually supposed to be. My ex wasn't a bad man, but he was a man-child and that was ultimately the fall of our relationship. So against my better judgment, I caved and started dating Christian after a long late-night conversation. I was excited in the moment, but my gut was churning for some reason I couldn't identify. I think the only saving grace to this relationship was that Christian lived in another state, so it was an online one. Things went well the first week or so. We talked most nights on video chat and started getting to know each other better. Then at some point I mentioned I needed to get my hair recolored. At the time, my hair was white. Not gray but white as paper, and the upkeep was pretty frequent. I wanted to change a bit and go for a more steel gray, so I was going through colors online with Christian. Out of the blue he just straight up told me. The white isn't flattering against your skin color, you're too dark to pull it off. You need something more muted and darker. I thought he would end there but the onslaught of demeaning remarks about my skin color and how I was, too dark for X hair color continued, now I'm black. I'm on the darker side, but I consider myself fairly, medium, on the scale. I firmly believe anyone can do whatever they want with their hair. Whether you're as pale as ever or as dark as they get, there's a hair color in every shade for everyone, and more importantly do what makes you happy. I'm somewhat racially ambiguous sometimes being mistaken for Indian or darker toned Asian, but I have had my fair share of racist comments ranging from black, Indian, etc. And typically they don't bother me at all. But what Christian said really struck me. It wasn't just a racist comment, it was a full-on pummeling about me being too dark for thing. I never cry, especially in front of a man, but I was now full-on sobbing on this Skype call. Just what the frick was this man thinking? Christian looked shocked, and asked me what was wrong? I asked him why on earth would he say such horrible things to me, and he came back with what would be his trademark response to when he said cutthroat things. I didn't mean it that way. You just misunderstood me. And somehow, Christian became the victim. And for some reason, somehow, I left it as a misunderstanding, he then showed me hair colors and styles he deemed appropriate for my skin tone. They were all various shades of red, from unnatural to natural. Thankfully I chose not to do red, had a red phase, done with that by then, and I later learned he had a fetish for redheads. Eventually Christian comes to visit me for the first time, and it lasted about a week. I have to say it was fairly uneventful, and was actually okay. We went to a couple of events and had a nice dinner at a restaurant. It was all fun and games until he had to leave for home. At the time I lived about two hours from the airport, and to get him there we agreed on a set time to leave, as you do. I get up my said time do a few things around the house and get ready. Christian is not to be seen, he's still asleep. I go to get him, and he snaps at me. Hard. I don't remember the exact exchange but I do recall him calling me a, nagging chick, and him saying, he knows what he's doing, and lies back down. I didn't have any other plans that day, it's finals, so fine by me, miss your freaking flight. I go to my computer to do some classwork, and roughly an hour and a half later Christian is getting around and packing up his things. I know that plane is going to be long gone well before we get to the airport, but I go anyways, maybe he can book another flight for later. The drive wasn't too bad and we get there well after the plane is gone, but Christian does his best. I drive off to go get lunch in the city maybe hit up the comic book shop I like and then get home for more classwork. I find the one free parking garage at the airport to get my bearings and look up a few places to go, make a phone call and check some notes on my school app, when my phone rings. 
It's Christian and I think we can all predict how the call went. Can you come get me? I missed my flight, the worst part was how upset and shocked he was. If I couldn't hold my tongue, I would have laughed out loud. He said they could put him on another flight in about five hours. Okay no biggie, I've spent overnight in airports before. But he didn't want to wait, he wanted me to come get him. Now I was exhausted, starving, and just ready to go on about my day. I had an assignment I really needed to finish and wanted to go home and get on that. I let him know I had work to do and his response was. Well shouldn't you have brought your laptop? This one is kind of on you. What the frick? How is this in me? I was still at the airport but why couldn't this grown ass man just sit and wait on his next flight? For some reason, I agreed and we went to go get lunch together and just talked and walked around some areas of the city. I cannot describe how painful it was, I just wanted him out of my still white hair, even if I couldn't admit it to myself at the time. This time he was perfectly pleasant at least, and then he dropped the dumbest comment. I guess next time we should just have you do the planning for the airport huh? I was a little off on my time, guys I could have smacked this man. I just blinked at him, not believing the dribble that he just spat out. Are you kidding me guy? First I'm bad at scheduling even though we would have been on point if we left at the time I originally said. But now it's not my fault and he just made a little blip in scheduling. I take him back to the airport, on time, and thankfully off he goes. I think that's enough for this installment. He doesn't seem very neckbeardy incel at the moment, but trust me we will get to that, as well as to why we are calling him Christian Grey. I start an online relationship with a neckbeard who has no concept of time and says my skin is too dark. Part 2 and 3 coming soon like and subscribe to be nice notified. Guy. A scary encounter the reason I'm telling my story is because a nice guy who I used to be friends with has recently started harassing my best friend, and making her feel uncomfortable. It started the summer before my freshman year. I was at a summer barbecue, and the host had a piano in their house. I asked if I could play, and the host said absolutely. I played a few songs that I loved, and a few songs that I was still working on, when the nice guy in question comes up. He also is musically inclined, so after I was done, he sat down and started to play a song he had recently finished writing. At first, it was really nice. But after the first five minutes, I realized that it was just the same two movements over and over again. Five minutes is starting to get long for a song, and I wanted to go hide somewhere, as this was a party and I was overwhelmed at that point. Parties have never been my cup of tea, and they probably never will be. But every time I tried to get up, he would get upset, saying he wasn't done yet, and that I really needed to listen to the whole song. I was bored at that point, and trying to find things to do while he played this song, I started quietly humming along in the key signature that he was playing in. After 16 grueling minutes of the same two movements over and over again, he was finally done. I got up to go find something else to do, but he approached me, and started commenting about how my vocals were amazing to him. I guess I was humming a little too loud sometimes, because I didn't mean for anyone to hear me. Regardless, I accepted his compliment, and in turn, complimented his song, as I didn't want to appear rude and I usually try to return a compliment when someone gives me one. He then proceeded to follow me around the party, continuously complimenting me on my voice, which, in my opinion, is mediocre, when I was just trying to find a quiet place to hide. Eventually, he was called to say hi to someone, and I got a moment of peace. Before I left the party, he came up to me and asked to exchange numbers. He wanted to write a couple of songs, and wanted me to sing the vocals. I was excited. I had always entertained the idea of becoming a vocalist, and this was my chance. I agreed, and left the party feeling rather optimistic. 
However he didn't contact me until almost two years later. He finally contacted me, saying he had written a couple of songs, and he wanted me to come out and hang out before we did some recording. I had yet to be diagnosed with depression, and I was pretty anxious at the time, especially since I was going to someone's house who I'd only met once before. I decided to bring my best friend since she was more or less my emotional support, and he agreed to also have her over. We laughed and watched videos, and had a blast. I was smart to bring my friend with me, because after that, we hung out together, just the two of us, and the nice guy antics began. He wanted to hang out one more time before we actually did any recording, and he insisted that we go bowling. I wasn't a fan of bowling, because it starts hurting my wrists after a short while, but I had decided that anything was better than moping around at home. The entire time we bowled, he kept staring at me, and making awkward comments about how pretty he thought I was, and that he couldn't wait for us to record together. The next weekend, he wanted to do some recording. He had told me that the previous guy who he was going to have sing vocals had suddenly asked to not have his vocals used, and that if his vocals were used, he would show up to the nice guy's house, attack his sister and mother, then kill the nice guy's whole family while making him watch the entire time. I was naive at the time, and thought I was skeptical, decided to give the nice guy the benefit of the doubt, and took his side. This was a big mistake, as I later found out he was, obviously, lying to me. He had never lied to me up until that point, so I had almost no reason to believe that he was lying. What a f up thing to lie about. Those were serious accusations that could mess up a person's entire life, even if they were proven false. He had me review a contract that his producer had written up, and said that he would pay me $100 for two songs. I agreed, and we got to work on recording. After about an hour or two of figuring out rhythms and key signatures, I had dinner with him and his family. His family is very nice, and I thought that aside from the eccentric behavior, he was a decent person. When it was time for me to leave, he gave me a hug, and said something that was completely inappropriate. He told me that he loved me, and that he couldn't wait for us to hang out again. This, along with the unexpected hug that I didn't consent to, made me extremely uncomfortable. Nice guy started blowing up my phone the next day, and nearly every day after that. He would go on and on about how I was the first real friend he had ever had outside of family members, and that he had been bullied by not only the students, but also the teachers of his elementary school. Being bullied by the students I could understand, as we live somewhere where bullying is a major issue due to how many kids are part of a specific religion. But claiming that the teachers bullied him? This is when I started to doubt him. Apparently, his parents didn't even bother to get the full story, and pulled him out of the school without actually confronting the school about it. He was diagnosed with severe ADHD, and needed medication, However his family believes in alternative medicine, so they never made him take his prescription. My brother has ADHD, and though he manages it well as an adult, it made him perform very poorly in school. My guess is that he claimed the teachers were bullying him because they gave him poor grades due to him not doing well in the class, but I'll never know the true answer. He also would say that any time he tried to make friends with someone, they would eventually cut him off for absolutely no reason and start bullying him. I began doubting him even more as time went on until the final event happened that caused me to cut ties with him. He began asking me to go to lunch with him, and would say that we were just going as friends. There's a local Japanese restaurant in town and I wasn't about to say no to having an excuse to eat there, so I agreed to hang out. He was always late however. Not 4 or 5 minutes late, but almost always 20 minutes late. He claimed it was always because he was busy helping his parents run their coffee business, and that they never respected the fact that he had plans. That seemed completely out of character for his parents, and for it to happen 4 or 5 times. 
I had began to see how obvious his lies were. But him lying wasn't the worst part of us hanging out. No, the worst part is that he started calling me pet names as if we were dating, and kept insisting that he paid the bill. The pet names themselves were extremely uncomfortable, as he kept calling me things like, cupcake, and, princess, and, marshmallow. The list goes on, but the worst one was, you're such a good girl. As if I was a freaking dog. This seemed to be his favorite thing to call me. The last time we had lunch together, he wanted to walk me out to my car. I'm much taller than he is, so when he put his arm around my shoulder, it forced me into an awkward position while walking. I asked him to let go of me but he pulled me into a hug and patted my back so hard that I was actually winded from it and had bruises on my back. I asked him to stop calling me pet names, but he didn't stop until I cut contact with him. During October, he invited me to go to a local farm and do a corn maze with him and his cousin. When I got there, he had arrived a bit earlier than I had, and rather than wait for me, he went in without me. Normally I wouldn't have a problem with this, except for the fact that he had fought me almost tooth and nail to let him pay for me to get in. He ended up not even paying me back for the admission or the food like he had promised. And between his awkward, unwanted hugs and comments, he kept calling me pet names that I really didn't appreciate. Around mid-December, I started also helping his family with their coffee business, and they paid me to clean out an old machine that they were going to start using for canning. This would have been fine, except for the fact that I was working out in the workshop, which had no heat, in the winter months. Both of us live in the mountains, so winter gets very cold around here. The only source of heat I had was a tiny space heater that barely kept my toes warm. Nice guy would also, help, me clean the machines to prep them for canning. By help, I mean he would sit or stand there and creepily stare at me from behind while I was working, and would give me surprise hugs that were unwanted. I couldn't take it and ended up quitting. They weren't paying me much anyways. And now, we come to the straw that broke the camel's back. The event that caused me to break contact with him. He invited me to go bowling with him, despite me having made it clear that I didn't like bowling. I ended up just sitting there while he bowled and ordered drinks and food for himself. All the money his family had paid me had gone towards gas and groceries, and helping out with family expenses. I didn't have the luxury of buying a game, or even any food or drinks. He was also continuously calling me pet names. It was very awkward. Finally, he finished playing. He wanted to continue hanging out, and I wanted to go to the thrift store to see if I could find a cheap skirt I could tailor to fit me. There was a thrift store down around the corner a ways, and he agreed to go with me. We had both drove our own cars, so I gave him the directions to the store so that we could meet up. About halfway there, he takes a turn down a road that would have taken him to the thrift store, so I thought nothing of it. I arrive at the store, and didn't see his car anywhere, so I decided to call him. He didn't pick up, so I waited a few minutes and called him again. He picks up this time, and said that he was already there and went inside because he thought that I had already arrived. I thought maybe I just didn't see his car, or he had parked somewhere else, so I went inside. I didn't see him anywhere, even after searching for him. I decided to call him, and he didn't pick up. Again, I waited a few minutes, then called again, but he didn't pick up. After trying to call him every few minutes or so, he finally picked up, saying that he was in the dressing room trying stuff on, and that we should go to the local mall and that if I found a skirt I liked, he would buy it for me. I texted my mom, and she wasn't happy with me. It was a school night, and it was starting to get late. I didn't have any homework, but I needed to be up early to get to school on time. But I couldn't get a hold of nice guy to tell him that I needed to go home. I called and called, and after 20 minutes, he finally calls me back, 
saying that he was in one of the department stores at the mall already. I went in to look for him, because at that point I had decided that I was done with the friendship, and I wanted to say to his face. But he wasn't there. I looked and looked and couldn't find him. I eventually ended up walking the mall, looking to see if maybe he had gone into a different shop, all the time calling him every few minutes, when he finally calls me back. Apparently, he had never even made it to the thrift store, and that he was sorry for lying, and that his Asperger's made him compulsively lie. He wasn't medically diagnosed, it was a self-diagnosis. He had also self-diagnosed himself with schizophrenia, autism, and depression. He had told me that he was self-diagnosed. I told him that that's not what Asperger's does to people, as I have a friend who is medically diagnosed and has told me about what is does. He had lied to me about being at the thrift store, and lied to me about being at the mall, and rather than pulling over and calling me back, he let the phone ring and left me wondering where he was. I asked him what else he had lied about and he mentioned that he had lied about the guy making threats to his family, as well as numerous other things. When I told him to never contact me again, he began blowing up my phone, bringing up all the nice things he had done for me, and that I shouldn't break up with him because we made such a great couple. I never agreed to go on a date with him, let alone be his girlfriend. I had only agreed to hanging out with him under the premise that it was as just friends, but he had meant for them to be dates all along. I told him that if I was having doubts about not being friends before, we definitely weren't friends now. Fast forward to a few days ago. I've graduated from school, and it's been about two years since he's popped up in my life. I had blocked his number because I didn't want to deal with him manipulating me anymore. My best friend, however, didn't. She got several texts from him, asking her how she was doing and other polite things such as that. He also asked her if she had ever timed how long her burps were, and when she didn't respond because she was busy, asked if it was the right number. She was in the car with me when she got the texts, and she was very uncomfortable because she knew what he had done to me. She responded, saying that she was doing well, and when he inevitably asked how I was doing, she said, per my request, that both of us have been busy with work, and that we haven't had much time to hang out lately. He then proceeded to talk about how much he still loves me, and that he wishes only the best for me. He said that he didn't do anything wrong, and couldn't understand why I told him to never contact me again. He then proceeded to say that he also loves my friend, and that he would do anything for her, calling the both of us angels and that he would basically sacrifice his life for us. This made my friend extremely uncomfortable, and she told him that while he was being polite, it was too much and that it was making her uncomfortable. He then proceeded to blow up her phone, sending her text after text about how he's been nothing but nice, and that we were being completely unreasonable. She keeps trying to tell him that there's such a thing as being too nice, and unwanted compliments are incredibly unnerving, but he isn't listening to her. I think she's blocked him now because he wouldn't stop texting her. I'm worried that he might show up to my house one of these days despite me never telling him where I lived or giving him an address. I'm hoping that my friend is able to move past this, because this has really put a lot of stress on her when she's already under a lot of pressure from her job.